Hey guys and welcome to JTech WP. Today I'm going to show you how I use iPhone 12 Pro HDR footage and edit in Final Cut Pro step by step. We're going to create a library, a project, do an edit, we're going to do a bit of speed ramping, add some music, some titles, and then we're going to export it in HDR for YouTube. So let's get going. Apple very kindly provides a really user-friendly guide on how to set up HDR if you're editing in Final Cut Pro. So you see here we're going to set up a new library with a wide HDR gamut, which is the important bit, and then we're going to go wide gamut HDR Rec 2020 HLG. We're going to do that now. Going into Final Cut Pro, File, New Library. I'm going to give it a name, I will call it iPhone 12 Pro HDR. Press Save. And over on the right hand side, there's our library here. We need to press modify and change this to wide gamut HDR. So that's going to use our full color range. Press change. Next, we create our project. File, new project. And we need to make sure that this is set on wide gamut HDR Rec 2020 HLG. And then this should work with YouTube when we export it and give us SDR and HDR if the viewer's got the support for it. I'll call it iPhone 12 Pro. And I know my frame rate's going to be 60 because I was filming at 4K 60 for this. Press OK. Port our footage. So here are my iPhone clips. I'm going to move them into the bin. They're imported. And I've got a few more clips down here which I'm going to import. Drag those in. They're imported. And importantly, don't forget to have your music. So I've got my music all ready to go. You can get the soundtracks from Epidemic Sound. I've got a link in the description. Fantastic library music. So there we go. We're ready to start editing in Dolby HDR Vision. The first thing I like to do when I start on an edit is get the establishing shot right. So I know this is probably going to be my opening shot. So I've put a mark in point. So I press I to mark in and then I find where I want the clip to end. And then I press O to mark out. And then I can press W to drop it on the timeline. So our first shot's going to look something like this. So we've got a shot of the sky and then the title's going to overlay over the bird. I'm going to show some of the location as it's by a beautiful lake and a nature reserve. And you can see the ducks and the swans and the geese. Press O to mark our out point, W to drop it on the timeline. So what I'm doing is just painting a scene of where we are before we get into the main edit. Found another establishing shot. A few more shots of the lake from different angles. And O for out. W to drop it on our timeline. And next I'm going to go straight into the GVs. I've got our rider to put on some gloves so it should cut with the music once it's ready. Let's open that. So press space bar to play. Wait for him to put his gloves on. Okay and I can use J to reverse it. So if I overshoot my marker. Pressing in. The gloves are going on. So that's one. I'm going to press O for out, then W to add it to the timeline, then cut to the second pair of gloves going on. So I just wait, press in. Glove goes on. That's enough of that clip. Then I'm going to play a bit further on as you put the helmet on. Press in. Helmet's going on, chin strap. Maybe take his funny looking face out of that bit because that doesn't look right now. Press O for out, W to a drop on the timeline. I think that's all I've got in that clip. So next clip I'm going to go to is onto Bike GV2. So what I want to do here is get a shot of the feet going on the pedals. Okay, and that is part of our intro. Drop that in there. And then we're going to go on to the bike park bit. So I'm just playing back my timeline. So I've got about 42 seconds before my music really needs to crank up. So what I'm going to do next is grab my music. I'll drag it onto the timeline just below. And what I really want to do is make sure that my bike bits line up where the beat changes. So I'll play this. Close my eyes, take me for a ride. 
So I'm establishing the shots are a bit long. What I want to do is when it says take me for a ride, that's when I want the mountain bike to show. So I'm going to trim this all down quite a bit. Here we go. So let's have a look at it now. So it's almost there, it's getting to where I want it to be. So I've got the establishing shot and then where it says take me for a ride, then it goes on the mountain biking shot. I've played around with the timings on the intro. I think it's looking a lot better now. There's our opening scene of the bird. Shot of the lake, static shot, not moving. Kicks the pedals, goes. Now we can cut to our action scenes. So I found a spot where the rider's dropping in onto the track. Mark my in and out points on it. And then I'm gonna press W to drop it in. Just go through each clip, marking in and out point on it where the best bit is. That's very similar to our next clip, so maybe not use that one. And he's not getting any speed going on there. And I'll keep going until I've got my edit done. One super useful feature I find very handy all the time is if I go View, Browser, Use Media Ranges, it will then show me which clips I've used. So in the future going forward, I know that I could use that section of that clip, that section of Bike 2, and I can continue this way and know that Oh yes, I haven't used these, but I have used these. It makes it a lot easier when you're editing. All right, so my edit's getting there. What I want to do is I've got a sequence here where I think it looked better if I did speed ramp. So as he goes airborne, I want to go and right there, I want it to slow right down. So I'm going to go back a bit. Roughly just about where he takes off. Right about there, press Shift and B. Press Space. And then while he's still up in the air or just before he touches down so I'm just using the arrow key left so just as the wheel touches down I press shift B again and we're gonna zoom in and then we're gonna go where it says 100% there I'm gonna make it slow and let's make it quarter speed so it's gonna stretch our timeline out and work it out for us and one other thing we can do with this uh, we can click here video quality optical flow and that will smooth out all the frames and make it look a bit better for us and i'm just going to go to modify render all i can press command and f9 it'll show us our render in progress so what it's doing now is rendering our speed ramp it may take a couple of minutes once you're doing a render because the computer's got to work quite hard to draw the extra frames in but now once it gets to 100 percent i can now click on here press spacebar Okay, and then we want another one as he takes off from this jump here. Moving the timeline scrubber. Right arrow key to find the takeoff point. It's just as that front wheel leaves the ground. So click on our clip, press Shift B, play. As soon as he touches down, Shift and B. And then we're going to make that slow to 50%. Go to modify, render all, and we're just going to wait. Command and nine to bring up your queue so you can see how long you've got to wait. So our render's finished. I'll just zoom out of the timeline a bit by pinch zooming. We'll have a look at this section now. Okay, so we've got our speed ramps in. And what I like to do as well is sort of fade the music out. So what we can do here is I'm going to grab the end of this music, grab this little green pick here and just fade that out. And then we're going to go to our transitions. I'm just going to go for a cross dissolve so it dissolves to black. Drag that onto there. And if you want to make the dissolve a bit longer, we can grab it there. So it should look something like this.
Maybe make the music just go a little bit past the clip. There we go. And next, I need to add some titles and bling it up a bit. So on our opening scene, I want to make sure we've got a title saying the location and what we're doing. Go up to the title tab up here. I'm quite fortunate because I've got a lot of uh, Motion VFX plugins and Pixel Film Studio plugins. So you can do some really cool stuff with these. You can have a look at simple title pack and hovering over these. It'll show you what the title looks like and it should animate onto screen. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can get the Motion VFX titles from. If you could use the affiliate link, that would be fantastic. So I'm going to go through all these and choose some titles. Decided to go for Motion Title Simple Pack 21, as it got quite a nice opener on it. So I've dragged that over on my timeline. I'm going to click on the title, and what I can do is I'm going to look to see where it's put the various things. So I'm going to call the main title Nantia Arian because this is where we are. Then we got by motion effects. Let's change that one to filmed with iPhone 12 Pro. And then up the top, we've got volume three. I'm just going to change that one to Dolby HDR. And then we're going to try and have a look at this now, see how it looks. So I think that really needs to be like a brighter color because it's not standing out very well. And also the title goes on a little bit long. I want that to finish by our second clip. For some unknown reason, I actually can't get the text to go white. I think this might be to do with HDR. I'll let the developers know about this, but I can, however, get it to go black. <laughs> so we'll go with black because it pops a bit better. So I click on black. I'm going to do the same for each of these. Okay, so it's getting there. The next thing I might well do is I don't like having the volume cranked up too high. So I'll click on our volume and I'm probably going to set it to about minus six. So you can type, you can type in the number minus six, press enter. We should see now that when we play back, our levels aren't as high and it should be much quieter. Here's our volume meters, much better. Our edit part's nearly done. If you did want to add the color grade on, what we can do is we're going to an adjustment layer by going up to titles, go to custom. And then what we can do is grab this adjustment layer and drag it over the whole clip, bring it over here, grab the end of it. So if you wanted to do a color grade across the whole clip, we can select our adjustment layer. So select your adjustment layer, click on here, and then I've got MLUT installed, which is part of Motion VFX. If you haven't got that, you can also go to Looks, and then just by dragging that onto the adjustment layer, it will completely change how your clip looks. So now you've got a bleach look. I click on the adjustment layer. And there we can see in the top corner, if you did want to disable it or adjust it, we can move the slider. And we can see there it's having an effect on the clip. I'm going to remove this because I want to keep it exactly how it is shot at the iPhone. Click on the adjustment layer, press delete, and it's gone back to the original footage. Once you've finished editing your video, we go to the top right corner, we can press share. I choose master file default, give it a name. It's coming up with a warning. Hover over that for a moment so we can see what it is. So it says you are trying to export an 8-bit codec. So it is trying to tell us we are trying to export it with the wrong format. It's easy to fix this, go to settings. So it's trying to do H.264, which doesn't support the Dolby Vision. As long as you select any of these, the Apple ProRes, it will work. But check out the size issues. So that's giving me a massive file using the XQ. Again, that's slightly 20 gig, so that's going to be a lot of time uploading. 422HQ, 12 gig. So they're coming down as we go down this list. So Apple ProRes 422, which is pretty good. We've got the LT, which is like a light version. And you've got the proxy version, which gives you the smallest file size. I'm going to go with uh, the 422, because that's what I normally use if I'm exporting it at maximum quality. And then I just press Next and give it a name so you can give call it whatever you want in the title up here and then press save and to bring up the export to see where it's at press command and nine and this may well take a while because it's got uh, quite a lot of data to render one thing i have found is that when i export the hdr video safari plays it correctly my phone plays it correctly 
Chrome, on the other hand, sometimes shows blown highlights, but I'm trying to work on a solution for that and I'll let you know as soon as I do. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.